Hello, my name's Stephen Thompson, and this is an actively amplified loudspeaker like some of the ones that I hire out. I'm going to plug it in and show you how it works. If you've previously made other loudspeakers work, then stop watching. You'd be wasting your time. You've already done it. However, if, like a lot of people, you've never made a loudspeaker work, this will be a great watch. So I don't know exactly what your setup will be next time you make loudspeakers work, but I hire out loudspeaker packages and I'm going to give you an example system now and hopefully that'll be really similar to something you're using and this will be therefore really helpful. So really what we're talking about here is not just loudspeakers but a PA system. So if we break this down into three parts, inputs, left hand side, control in the middle or mix, and then on the right hand side we've got outputs, that's the speaker like what you saw right at the start of the video. So I intend to keep this explanation simple. Again, if you've got previous experience of setting up speakers, this video probably isn't for you. If you're in a band and you want to plug in multiple inputs, this video probably isn't for you. However, if you've got an event coming up where you want to plug in some music and you want to use a microphone, this video is very much for you. So here's an example setup. This is one of the packages I hire out. Let's begin with the music. I tend to test music first when I'm setting up speakers because it's more stable than the microphone. It won't do that feedback thing, that ringing. And also, well, you don't have to talk like an idiot into a microphone, test one, two and all that. You just put some music on and slowly fade it up. It seems like a more controlled way to start your day. So, um, this is the cable we'll use to get the music. Um, we, this one is, a, left and right jack they are labeled in tiny little you want some tape on them really this one here if you can't see you to trust me this says number one that will mean left and we're going to use this input here input uh, three and four left right one goes to left two goes to right now this is thing isn't even switched on yet it's often good just to plug stuff in even before you've got things switched on. Certainly at this point we haven't got the loudspeaker switched on, heaven forbid. Sort your inputs out and then move sensibly towards your outputs. So I'm going to use my phone. This is a, hey, oh, this is a uh, lightning to 3.5 millimeter augs socket. It goes in there. In my packages I also include USB-C by the way. Uh, this is the microphone cable for later, so let's just send that over there for now. Uh, I've got a camera to uh, unlock my phone, should I? And bring up some Spotify. Again, nothing switched on yet, just plugging stuff in. So, one thing on the iPhone, I'm just going to dem demonstrate this on an iPhone because it's what I've got, um, is that when you plug this in, if you play something from the nice from the phone when you plug it in it should take over and it does um, sometimes I'm plugging adapters like this into my phone and I'm still hearing music playing from the phone go no further figure out what's wrong here because um, you're never going to get sound onto the desk uh, onto this little mixer if there's still music playing off the phone the adapter should take over uh, in this case well uh, it says, uh, is this lightning adapter, uh, uh, is this lightning adapter connected to a pair of headphones? Um, if you switch devices, you can update the selection in the sounds and haptics sec uh, section of the settings. Um, okay, it's a, I'm just going to say headphones. It's effectively what it is. Now, uh, in terms of output level on here, don't play it right at the top. Give yourself some scope to go louder if you need to, but maybe come down to about, I've put that at three quarters, 75%. I'm just going to put that down to one side for a moment. Now, at some point, we should switch on the, this mixer. There's a power cable in the back. Switch it on. I can do that without fear of banging, popping, because the speaker is not switched on at this point. So there's not going to be a problem there. Okay, next, let's see if we can see some signal on the mixer. So there's this rule in setting up speakers, which is make sure you can see the sound before you hear it. And the reason for that is to make sure that loud bursts of sound don't suddenly fly out of speakers and hurt people's ears. And when we say see it, we mean, can you see levels in the mixer, uh, and indeed sometimes on the speakers, before you actually hear the sound. So let's see the signal first. So I plugged it into input 3 and 4. 
Uh, this is the level control for input three and four. Ultimately, this is the control that you're going to be controlling how loud you want the music or otherwise just turn it up and down on the phone. So this is going to come up. Now there's a little line here um, that would be referred to perhaps as like sort of the, uh, the zero value, kind of like the typical default, turn it up to about there kind of thing. There's a little line there. And then, of course, that could be too loud and you might need to turn it down. I'm just saying put it there first. Unity is the technical term. So and then this one can come up to um, a similar kind of value. And we see some signal, fine. That's just a start point. We don't hear anything yet. The speaker's not even switched on. I just wanna make sure I can see the signal before I go any further. And I did, great. Something else just to be aware of is make sure that the rest of this uh, little mixer is um, uh, normalized. What I mean is like make sure that there's not other things turned up that shouldn't be turned up. So turn this level control to zero um, so that there's nothing coming flying out of there. Uh, these are just other inputs by the way. We're going to plug a microphone into there next. We won't use this one. That's input two. And we won't use this one. This is input five and six. For now, just make sure they're turned down. Uh, these control the tone like bass or higher frequency of the inputs on this mixer. They can be in the middle and these can also just be in the middle as a start point. Now, remember for now we've turned down this master fader because I want to test the microphone next before I switch on the speaker. So let's test this microphone so we get our cable back again. I'm going to pause this music playing for a moment so we don't get distracted with that. I am going to plug that in there. I should point out that looks like that. Plug that in there. And I'm going to plug that neatly into there. There's something in the world of sound called phantom power. All you need to know for now is it doesn't need to be applied in this case. There's a button that says phantom power. It's this one. This would be switched on. Little red light. This would be switched off. Leave it off. In fact, check it's off if you, if you, you should really. Right. Our mic's plugged into there. I would press that button. What that has to do with is reducing some very low frequencies from the microphone, which frankly aren't helpful to speech intelligibility and clarity. Uh, also be aware that some microphones have an on-off switch on them. This one does, although it's got a stop, so you can't switch it on and off. So now actually, for all intents and purposes, the microphone is, is ready to be used. So I'm going to talk into it, that's going to come off camera, and I'm going to turn this, I'm going to make sure this master control is up, and then I'm going to turn this and make sure I can see some level, which I can. Test, test. Okay, so now we've definitely seen the signal in the mixer, it's time to connect to our output, it's time to hook up the speaker. So next, a case of taking the female end of the XLR audio cable, putting it in the left output of the mixer. Left, because this is a mono instance, which just means single speaker, and it's customary to take the left output. And then the male end of the XLR audio cable goes into the input one of the loudspeaker. Still at this point, the loudspeaker switched off. Good news, it is time to switch the speaker on, if not already, and get our test done. So if not already, power it on there. We can fade this input one up to zero at this point. There are these four modes of this speaker for use in different environments. PA is the flattest. That's sort of the most neutral sound, the most balanced sound, the most evenly balanced sound. But if you want low end boost, then there's this DJ function uh, that you can move it to. Changes the tonality of the speaker somewhat. Then there's a monitor function that is, if you use this speaker, it's in this orientation at the moment, like it's supposed to be on a tripod, but you can lie it on its side and put it on the floor of a stage, for example, and use it as a monitor wedge for uh, music playing or uh, for, for monitoring if you're doing a speech. We're not talking about that in detail right now. And there's a solo mode as well for 
uh, effectively, effectively like solo performance but again no no further detail required on that just now for this basic video back to PA I encourage you to make sure the limiter is switched on please um, so that's its off position that's on perhaps not obvious to see just through the video but it's a real obvious feel when you press it for which way is on and which way is off that just protects the speaker by the way when there is signal reaching the speaker it will light here green we've not played anything into the speaker yet so that's why it's not lighting green hurrah and finally we can test the whole system so I said earlier that testing with a some music first seems like a sensible idea so that you avoid um, wild feedback so phone plug it in and press play let's put that there so the master fader can come up to that point it's marked with a triangle and then slowly nice and steady faded up and now you'll see that green light and we can test the microphone as well the master fader is still faded up but that's okay the microphone isn't live because their input one channel is not faded up but now let's fade it up I'll talk into the microphone but that'll be out of shot test 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 nice and slowly just fading that up um, just a quick thing about the way that these loudspeakers are designed in relationship to microphone use um, the microphone is designed to be used behind or off to the side but not directly in front of the loudspeaker um, so I'm talking into this microphone quite it's quite close to my mouth and I'm stood behind the loudspeaker over in that direction um, it's not feeding back it's nice and stable if I was to move the microphone in front of the speaker at about this level uh, it would most likely feed back so watch out for that you want to set your level yeah sure loud enough but you also need to think about where your microphone is in relation to your speaker so that you can get it loud but it's not feeding back um, there is a little bit of tonality control on this speaker on this mixer but not a lot uh, this will take off some high end and this will take off some low end that's where we're going to leave it for now uh, but we need to show you how to switch off without damaging anything so the key is that the speaker always gets switched off first you can at this point fade down input one uh, input three and four for the music's already faded down fade down the master fader but before we switch off the mixer we need to switch off the speaker so fade it down and switch it off that's to avoid a pop sound because if you switch off the mixer first it would pop on the speaker also none of this no no please no pulling out audio cables from phones while the speaker is switched on it'll make a popping sound potentially we don't want that look after the speaker now you're good to switch off the mixer doesn't make a popping sound take the cables out pack it away just need to show you about the stand well I hope you've been finding this video very useful um, just the final thing this comes up quite a bit with some of my first time hire customers is that they um, say oh, I'm struggling to put the stand away how do you do it well you pull this pin here and you raise the leg base so putting it back to how it was before I think where some people might be going wrong is that they pull the pin but try and lower the leg base and end up with a thing that looks like that which is way too big to fit in a bag so pull the pin and raise the leg base before we close I want to point out that although we've been looking at this mixer which if you hire from me is likely what would be coming out on your job um, you might be watching this somewhere else and you might be using a larger input mixer like this one don't be put off by these larger input mixers folks even if you're only playing back some music and using one or perhaps two microphones look it's the same stuff just repeated for example um, we were putting the microphone into this input well you could just put the microphone in 
that input. Uh, let's go down this channel strip and see that it's the same stuff. That is, it says gain there. What's it to do with? Well, uh, turning the input up and down. Uh, oh look, we come down this channel strip. Yes, there are some buttons we just passed there, but essentially there's this one that says gain. It decides the sensitivity, how, how loud that input is. Coming down here, this has an equalizer. Okay, there's more on it. Uh, you can change more areas of the tone. This is now like bass, mid and high frequency, whereas this one is just bass and high frequency, but it's the same idea. Um, we can skip past these for the moment, uh, at this moment in time, you, you wouldn't be using these straight away. And possibly this one, this is an extra that this bigger mixer has that this one doesn't. It's called pan, has to do with whether the signal goes to that speaker or that speaker, put it in the middle. And then look, the same at the bottom, we have a fader, uh, decides how loud the microphone's going to be going to the output. And this one, same, decides how loud this microphone's going to be going to the output. And then finally a master fader. We were turning this up to get the signal out and that's the master fader on this one. We're turning that up uh, to get a signal out of this mixer.